So thank you for joining us again uh, today at Java and Technologies. My name is Delvin. Uh, I'll be your host for today afternoon. I'm here to talk about SOLIDWORKS Electrical and the future of how electrical drafting um, and design is taking shape. So quick introduction to Java and Technology for those of you who may not know Java and Technologies. Um, we are up in six countries, uh, sorry, six, uh, six offices across the country. Uh, we're a Canadian operation, we've got over 90 people and hundreds of certifications. We provide everything from SOLIDWORKS, um, electrical, to other SOLIDWORKS integrations. We provide a complete solution. And we've been in business since 1997. So what does it mean for you as, um, as an individual? So solutions, we start off with investing in your people. We suggest ideas, we suggest concepts. We, are, we help with the onboarding, development, retaining. And uh, we push you and introduce you to new technology, essentially taking you into the next stage of uh, developing your processes, uh, managing your collab collaboration, eventually help you to push this out into your manufacturing. So you can take it all the way from uh, technology to manufacturing. So today I'm here to talk about a couple of things. One of them is the levels of design experience. So with SOLIDWORKS Electrical, you as a designer have the option of uh, either just sticking to normal drafting or using some of the automation levels available. So today I'm going to touch on terminals, PLC drawings, automation levels um, of different forms of um, macro consumptions. And in the last part, I'll be touching on Excel-driven drawings. So with that, let's switch over into SOLIDWORKS Electrical. So SOLIDWORKS Electrical is a standalone application. And uh, the good thing about this application is it can run independent of SOLIDWORKS. Now, it has an SQL database at the back end because of which it has a powerful tie-in and you can leverage that to work in a collaborative environment in both the electrical schematic space and the mechanical design of how 3D solution is going to appear. So what I have in front of me is one of our facilities layout. I've already put in a couple of uh, wires and started off this project but the next stage in here is I need to insert a power supply so I'm just going to right click onto this and simply go insert symbol. Now as soon as I place the symbol, the application intuitively knows that this is the power supply symbol that I need to based on the part number that was already part of this project. So power supply is in place, all the information shows up. I need to change the wires that are going downstream from the power supply. So to start off, I'm going to switch this over and replace this wire with a 24 volt 18 AWG. So I'm going to do the same thing and replace this conductor too over here and we're going to switch this over to ground. So I've now made my changes to those conductors. I've inserted the symbol and we're ready to go ahead. I want to add in a motor so to start off with this, I will <coughs> draw some wires. Drawing wires is a really simple task. You simply select the wire that you need to begin with, and then the application will draw itself out based on how far you move. So I'm going to click over here. As soon as I click, it wants to take a bend. Now, notice how I say these are wires, because these are not lines, they're actual wires. If you right click onto them, you go down to properties, they have individual properties in terms of gauge, section information, uh, color, and so on. Now, to this, I'm going to add some more devices. So the first device I need to add over here, let's just simply click on insert symbol, and as soon as I do that, it brings in the most appropriate symbol for this particular part number again. So 
The next component we're going to add in is the contacts. We're just going to insert another symbol. It's going to ask me, do I want to insert from a manufacturing part or a circuit? So let's see what options do I have. I have a relay coil that's available, and I also have some contacts that are available. So this is what I'm going to use and place it in my current drawing. As soon as I place it, it trims right through those wires. <coughs> now, moving forward, I'd like to add the motor. Now, compared to the other two uh, components that I just added, for the motor, I'm just going to go in here and type in motor as a search string. Because it has an SQL database, it's pretty powerful enough to bring out the symbol for me. So as soon as I place it, trims right through the wires. It gives me the options that I'm looking for. Now it's going to ask me where do I want to place this motor. So let's say I place this motor on the roof section of my facility. And we go down over here and we're going to add some manufacturing parts. So click on search. Now we have a very powerful search filter like I mentioned. You saw how I typed in a string and it brought out a whole list of symbols that are available. Same thing when you're adding manufacturing parts. You can, define, you can decide which class you're looking for in terms of uh, parts. Also, once you have your filter set up, so in this instance I'm looking for a Leroy Sommer motor, I simply have to hit search and it brings up the most relevant ones that are required. So I'm adding that to the project. I now have a new motor added to my project. This needs to be interfaced through a terminal script, so I'm simply going to click on Insert and Terminals and place the first terminal. As soon as I place the first terminal, it wants to do its own quality control, so what we are going to do is we're going to select Terminal Strip X1 and ensure that we're starting off uh, on the fresh terminal strip. I've added four terminals and now I have my first segment of the drawing completed. This is what I address as uh, basic drafting. You can add components, you can add uh, symbols, manufacturing parts, insert terminals, and it is fairly simple because it is a Windows-based environment. Now, we do have the option of adding some more objects, and I do want to add exactly the same thing you know, in a second row for, for another motor. So I have the option of simply selecting all of these, dragging, and dropping that into our database. Now what I've just created over here is something that we call as a macro. Now if you have anything that you'd like to reuse in your design process, a macro is uh, that feature available to you. So I'm going to click on OK and this just got added to my database. Now this is available for all users uh, whether they're on the same project or not, they should have access to this from the database. Double click and bring this in. <clears throat> You'll notice that I may have over selected. So now I have, I'm going to hit finish over here. Looks like I got the motor in place but I did select that so I'm just going to delete it and there is no second power supply so I got what I wanted. I've got two of them and you'll also notice that um, it automatically increments the next available motor number and all the devices update so that there is quality control being kept at all times through your project. Now the motor essentially is sitting at a different location so all I have to do is draw this out and make sure that the guys on the floor know that it's not for, it's not something part of the electrical enclosure or the panel. It's somewhere else. So I'm just going to pick that, and now I have my motors placed out. I've completed one page over here. I do want to go on and continue on to the other page. So on the control section, I already have some information already placed out for myself. I need to expand this a little bit more. So to expand it. I'm going to start off by drawing a single wire. So it's fairly simple to draw some objects over here. So I'm going to draw it out. As you can see, it's just a click away. Now I'm going to complete this all over here so that I have a little bit more. 
I've got my wire placement at least put out. Now I need to add in some more symbols. So one of the symbols I do need to add is a coil for K1. To do that, I can either right click into K1 which is over here or, uh, <coughs> excuse me, can either right click into K1 and insert it myself. So go insert symbol. It's going to ask me do I want to do it from the available symbols. Say yes, okay. Place K1 and you'll see that all the contact information shows up. Um, that's your cross-reference table. It's live, so anything that you add or subtract from your circuits that are placed in your design will be will get updated in real or live time. So my next component that I do want to add some information to is S1. So I'm simply going to go right click in here, say insert symbol. Again, it's going to ask me, do I just want to pick a circuit? So yes, it looks like I want to pick a signaling and alarm, and I'm just going to put in an indicator symbol over here. So with that, I've completed this segment. The only thing pending is that I do need to change this wire. So I'm going to go in and replace this. And I'm going to put in a ground. So the operation is complete. I've drawn a little bit of my control segment. I still have some more drawing that I would like to place in here. For which, I can either use the available features of um, inserting a project macro. Now a project macro would be similar to the macro that I already inserted. The only difference is I would be inserting multiple pages in bulk. But uh, I'd like to pick out just another segment of my drawing. So that's my second level of automation that I just spoke about using a project macro. But I'm old fashioned, I like this, so I'm going to go in and just complete this operation. And now I have the remaining part of my drawing added. As soon as I do that, my components are also added to my project and um, I can now make connections. So let's say I complete this and I drag it down. Now the wire is connected. If you want to uh, pass information from page to page, it's always uh, a good idea to connect your off-page references and in SOLIDWORKS Electrical, this is done intuitively using something called as the Origin and Destination Manager. You can simply select the connection points and the application itself will kind of guide you as you make your connection. So what I just did was I connected the 24 wire from one page to the other, the ground all the way through. And if you go over here, you'll see that it pretty much on double clicking, it'll take you to where you need to be. So same thing with a 24 volt wire. These are live hyperlinks that do transcend through the project as you move forward. So I have completed this operation. Let's take a moment and go back to our slide deck and see what all we've covered. So I've shown you macros and I've uh, sort of covered just the introduction level of it and how you could insert uh, macros. But there is also terminals and PLC drawings. Those are mm, the very basic and the start features available with SOLIDWORKS Electrical. So getting into that, the first thing is we've got our terminals. They already have been placed over here. So let's take a look and see what's going on. You can right click into the terminals and we have the option over here, excuse me, zoom in a little bit. We have the option over here to edit the terminal strip. So editing the terminal strip launches something called as the terminal strip editor. And this allows you to have, take a look at a live from to list. So you can see exactly what's going on in your terminal strip as the wires go in or con cables, conductors get out. So we are going to add a part information for this particular component. So let's right click onto this and we're going to assign some information. So we start off with that. And that's the part number I've added for all my terminals. So I put that in. I have two cables over here. So I'm going to go and group select the first cable. And we're going to link it to the cables available in my database. So I do have W1, W2, W3. So I'm going to start off with cable W1. This is sitting in my project as a reserved cable. So if I wanted to search something from the database, I can always go in and search that within the database. 
and add that part number. So with this, my cable is now linked. I can click on OK, step out of here for a moment. These now have cable information. So if I move this down just for a second for you to see, you'll see all the cable information that populates onto the drawing. Same thing with the second half. I'm just going to go in here, grab all of this, associate the cables. We're going to pick cable W2, grab and select all of those conductors, and voila. You've got all this information mapped out. Now, I have been there at a point where, you know, you're rushing through your project. You don't have time to explain everything that you've done. Your terminals are not done, uh, or you don't have a terminal layout. You kind of let it, um, let the guy on the floor decide how things are going to be wired. However, in SOLIDWORKS Electrical, you can actually generate terminal strip drawings by simply clicking a button. No matter where you place your terminals through the drawing, it will then generate a terminal strip drawing for you. It captures uh, just about the right information you require, tells you what's going in, what's going out, what cables, what devices are going on to it, and which pin numbers any of these objects are connected to. So once that is done, the last part that I had to show in terms of automation for uh, this segment of the demonstration was PLCs. So how does one go ahead and handle PLC? So you can go into your PLC manager and simply add a PLC. So once you add a PLC, you can go in, search, and the application will then simply allow you to go search for a part number, point out all the circuits that are available. It's now part of your project. So I've added this to the project. I have some more information available. Let's see what we can do. We're going to add some I.O. devices to this. We're just going to right click onto that and add some inputs and outputs. So the application is now getting primed and saying we're ready to add some more uh, devices to this particular card. So I'm going to group select this again and we're going to add inputs to this particular card. You've already seen the macro feature and I'm going to make use of this feature. Same thing for the outputs. I'm just going to quickly group select them. And now I have the option of just generating drawings. So if I before generating drawings, sometimes you do need to have description information. If you're looking to add some description information, you can always go to your inputs and outputs. And you'll see that the application uh, then also gives you the option to just group select it, manipulate the information, so you can always start off by saying start, stop, relay. I want to leave it at that, but you kind of get the idea that you can even copy paste Excel into that um, and you can have all the descriptions populated for you. With this, I just simply click on generate drawings, click on OK, and the application will then place all of my my card and all the other devices that need to go with it. I want to click on close. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Okay, uh, we can also take a look and see what's going on over here. We've got um, We've got some information that's been placed out. Uh, I know one of the questions was why wasn't SOLIDWORKS electrical part of the poll? I just looked at that. But um, this is just a general general discussion for all um, our prospective users and current users to kind of see what's going on with SOLIDWORKS. Now this PLC card has all the information I need, it even puts in all the description information. It splits the card if it doesn't fit on the page. Now this is not just a block. You can go in and delete the objects. And as you zoom in, you'll notice that um, this is your cross-reference information. So if I were to go in and grab a pair of um, normally open contacts and place them here, 
all I have to do is put in the part number or the device number which now I'm looking at is 14 K2 and on doing that you'll see that your information is again live so if I move this around a little bit more the numbers do update so it's giving me the page number and the row number so that's how you can insert PLCs. You can also manually insert it like how I insert all the other symbols and parts in the project. Stepping away from um, just the basic introduction to how the application uh, captures design, we went through how terminal layouts are done, how you can introduce PLCs in an automated feature. I also captured um, how you can use macros just by simple drag drop or a bulk insertion of uh, insert project macro. But this year they also introduced an Excel automation feature. So I'm going to switch over for a second. And in the Excel automation, what SolidWorks um, electrical development team did was they allowed us to import objects based on the an Excel list. So what we're looking at over here is um, an options and variance list. And you can then decide what kind of design or what kind of macros you would like turned on and off in your project. You can add in, you know, coordinate information. You can add in drawing description, bundle description, and so on. I'm going to scroll over a little bit more. Now, this device or this particular configuration can come up in multiple configurations. So I'm going to set this up for a 3 kilowatt design. Let's save that. And now if I come back into SolidWorks Electrical, if you look at this particular book over here, it's completely empty. All I have to do is import this in. And what that does is it grabs all my macros from the project, adds the configuration, adds the relevant information that is required, and it creates a project book for me. Let's close for a second over here, and you'll see that our new drawings have just got placed in. <coughs> for purpose of example, I just decided to um, show a little bit of IEC so you have an idea that the application can do both ANSI and IEC forms of design. Alright, so these are the levels of design of experience that the application uh, does expose you to. It does automate a whole lot of tasks within your project. It, um, it automates the devices and then the naming convention as they're brought in. You can also do um, sheet numbering, terminal layout. It's fast, easy to use, and reduces a lot of rework. So one of the things in SolidWorks Electrical that uh, people find is a big time saver is the wiring number. So you can simply go in here and click on number new wires and the application will run right through the project and update all along. So even if I double clicked over here and went to the other page, my wiring information should be live. How do you do this? You simply have to set up or predefine the formulas uh, and the application will take it up to the next level for us. So we're going to, I did introduce you to PLCs already as a part of the automation that's available. And I'm now going to talk about how the PL, how the layouts work. So I've got a few more minutes over here, and I'd like to quickly touch on the fact that you can do you can do cabinet layouts either in 2D or you also have the option to do it in 3D. My personal favorite is the 3D over here. Now it really depends on what type of uh, what type of design you're looking to get into. So this is our little control panel over here. I need to insert terminals. So I'm going to right click over here and say insert terminals. Just make sure the application snaps onto the rail. And as you can see, it's going to just uh, add all of the components for us. Now, the application takes it up a next level for us. Uh, if you do just um, Select some of these objects over here, and you click on Route Wires. It uh, grabs all of the all of the content from SolidWorks Electrical. So um, it grabs all the content from SolidWorks Electrical and essentially routes right through. Now. 
one of the things to note with this application is uh, to make sure that you've connected all of your devices. So if you haven't connected any of your devices, the route may not complete. Now, one of the things um, that does make this application stand out a little bit is when you do decide to get cable lengths and so on, you have, uh, let's take uh, this motor over here, for instance. We added motor M5 right through the project. So I'm going to scroll down and just look for motor M1. And we're going to associate this to this uh, particular device. It's going to ask me, do I want to associate on the 3D end? And I can route this particular component. So grab that. And within a few seconds, we should see the application then routing right through. So those yellow lines over there are logic lines. The logic lines then uh, dictate how the cables are going to run through this uh, particular layout. So we look over here. Remember, I did mention in your schematic, those are conductors and they are wires. They use all the bend information, the color information, so it knows exactly where to route. And in this instance, we have it routing all the way underneath into this uh, into this terminal strip. Now, the benefits of this is that you can you can route inside the box also, and um, you can segregate how you want the route to run. You can then set up any other information such as uh, length information and so on. So in this instance, if I did go back now to SolidWorks Electrical and I decided to run my reports, what happens is the application will then show me the length of the cable that was routed and then the list of um, any of the other wires that do have some length information. There are additional reports that can be manipulated. Um, it is either an SQL or XML, depending on your preferences. And you can either export to Excel, text, or XML. So I'm simply going to click on Generate Drawings. And let's place this out within the project. So that's being added to my project. Now, if there is some changes or something that's not listed properly, you can always uh, fix it by simply making some changes to the way the outputs are exported. But with that, the last part of my uh, presentation simply presents the fact that you do have other documents that are available. So all of this is possible between 2D and 3D only because of the collaboration environment in SQL. So all of one part will have all of this information, whether it is a single line, the schematic, the 3D part, or even a 2D footprint. One part will have all those references to keep your intelligence live. And because the SQL engine is just a powerful platform to work with. The reports are automated. You've already seen how that uh, comes about. But the best part is when you do need to uh, publish this to either DWG, eDrawings, or PDF, in this case, let's publish this to PDF for a second. You'll get to see that the application and the data is live, and it does move from um, so all this information is there. If I click on that, it'll take me to where, where I need to go. Uh, not just that, if I were to click on any of these symbols, it'll take me to wherever they are placed within that. Now, for the most part, I did uh, I did plan this design out so. As I plan this design out, I also give uh, the project a structure so I can expand onto this and simply go on to the, the pages directly that I am interested in. And I can also give this off to any of our customers. And um, as you can see, the information is uh, live as it comes out to produced in SolidWorks Electrical. Now, just to summarize, this is a complete solution. Um, you have everything from your automation of your wire, uh, wire numbering, device tagging. It's fast, it's easy. Macros are there. There's multiple levels of macros that you can use. Your PLCs can be automated. Your panel uh, layouts can be either driven from 2D or 3D. 3D just gives you that additional level of um, design quality that you'd require. It also gives you cable lengths. You can do duct calculations to figure out if you are consuming or meeting code. 
the library is the heart of everything. At the end of it, it does give you automated um, reports and intelligent PDFs. You can also run design rule checks to make sure your work has some um, isn't missing its quality.